So what I did here actually is I was able to paint outside and inside and also paint the inside so that we can have a little more contrast. And we're going to start now drawing the occlusal table. I think it's very important to have a good understanding of the occlusal table, especially if we were placing composites. And then the first aspect is the mesodistal line. Let's let's put the mesodistal line here back again. These are these are is the reference of the mesodistal line. And what we want to do now is imagine that for the second for the first premolar, the mesodistal line is much more pronounced, actually, than in the second premolar. It will actually go beyond the occlusal table. Very good. For the second premolar, you have more trapezoidal aspect. And so let's say that the marginal ridge will invade more the anatomical aspect of the teeth. For the first premolar, this is where it comes for me, the most important uh, aspect when building composites, which is defining actually where the central fossa is. A good reference for us is actually the buccal groove. And the buccal groove is distal to the central fossa. And why is it that it is distal to the central fossa? Well, imagine the protrusion here, the protrusion movement of the antagonist's arch. When you have laterality, laterality movement, it will be distal like that. Yeah, that's occlusion. And if it is distal, then let's go ahead and put the working movement. The working movement will be like that. Okay. All right, so if the, the antagonist cusp that sits here in the central fossa will move in laterality distally and it will pass through the buccal uh, groove, then the central groove must be a little mesial. The central groove must be a little mesial to in relation to the buccal groove. Also, the distal groove coming from the fossa will be also distal and lingual because it follows more or less the working movement and that's because the, the oblique ridge that sits here needs to give way away space for this working movement okay this is more or less like a tripod form it will vary a little bit and sometimes actually it will also go outside the um, occlusal table. Very good. With the lingual group, there's not a, not a lot of secret, but it does clinch, cleave into the, the oblique ridge a little bit like that, and then it dies very softly around this region. For the second molar, actually, the central fossa will be even more mesial than for the first molar, and that's because the distal you go, the more um, the distal the tooth seats, seat, uh, the more distal the, the uh, laterality movement is. Okay, so it's something like that. Very good. And this this is pretty much it. I think if we have a good understanding of the uh, occlusal determinants, determinants of the anatomical features of the tooth, we will be able to place a much faster restoration. We will be able to have much more fun placing this restoration. It, it makes a lot of sense just to make a simple study like that and actually uh, increase the speed with which we actually place our, our restorations and so it just becomes more fun. Yeah, so let, let's add a little more shadowing here. What about the what about the secondary groups?
So I think it's important also to know the positioning of the secondary groups because they also provide space for the lateral movements of the antagonist and they also provide actually a reinforcement for the two because the secondary groups are formed by secondary volumes here in the concept. So what happens, and I'll show you here now, and then we're going to wrap it up, is that you have a groove here, but this is a volume and it connects with the cusp and that provides more, I think, reinforcement for the cusp. So don't forget about these secondary grooves. And remember, the secondary groups, they never connect to the central fossa of the cusp. Very common that I see uh, dentists placing the restoration in, in vitro, uh, even in vitro models, and they tend to draw these lines all the way to the central fossa or the mesodistal groove, but they are much more subtle than that. I notice also the first premolar tend not to have this uh, secondary groups too much. It's a much more subtle aspect. All right, so with that said, I think we're pretty much done. And uh, I hope you enjoy and try practice a little bit because this will enable you to be much faster placing composite restorations. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time. Have a good night. Bye-bye.